So uh, Matthew 6.33 and Romans 4.17. Father, let us hear. Let us adopt your ways. Let us become men and women after your purposes and your desires. Let your kingdom come and your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come, God. Let your kingdom be poured into us. Let your kingdom that has been set in us stir, realign us, strengthen us, change us. Let your kingdom order us in a new way today, God. Let your kingdom be, bring new life into us. Let your kingdom bring us into a place where we follow you and your ways and all that we needed is added unto us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So Matthew 6, 33, let's read it together with the voices of authority. Ready, read. Okay, I need about 50 of you that believe it to read it. Okay, voices of authority. Okay, we got company, y'all. Come on. Wonderful. We ain't had to do all that. Romans fourteen seventeen. When you have that, say Amen. Romans 14, 17. Four. Is it four? What did I say, 14? Yeah, 14, 17. I think that's it. Let's lift up our voices of authority and read that together. Romans 14, 17. Ready, read. So God writes or communicates to us through uh, Matthew that this kingdom of God, let that be the very first thing that we seek in life. For new believers, for anyone that is three years in the kingdom or under uh, and you haven't made this your aim and your focus, shift into that place where I am seeking I am aiming at and striving at, first of all, his kingdom. Okay, I'm not trying to get out of a situation or a dilemma, but I'm seeking first his kingdom, which the ways of his kingdom will bring me through that dilemma. So he says, seek that first and his righteousness, his way of being right. And then all these things taken together will be given you besides. And the context of that scripture deals with meeting needs. Needs are met when we pursue the kingdom. They're met in a kingdomly fashion, which means that they are everything we would need and they lack nothing. So again, as people of the kingdom of God, which is where our Lord Jesus came from, what he carried, what he is sitting down at the right hand of God interceding about. That's what the seeking of our life should be is the kingdom of God. The king's domain, his domain is what we're is what we're after. Now, as it relates to the kingdom, Paul says this in Romans 14, 17, that the kingdom of God is not a matter of food or drink but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Now, Paul lists these things because those in the church at Rome were taking things that were not necessarily attributes to the kingdom, and they were making these things, things you needed to follow to live in the kingdom. It's like today, there are a lot of men and women that add things to what kingdom living should look like and what it should be. 
And so Paul is making it clear to them and bringing clarity to the believer as to what the kingdom looks like. Why is that important to the believer? Because the believer has been assigned position, placement in the kingdom of God. So he or she must know what the kingdom looks like. We can't flesh out the kingdom if we don't know what the kingdom looks like, if we don't understand the kingdom. And if we ascribe things to the kingdom that are not the kingdom, then we'll have something that God will not honor, but it will be full of our energy, our activity. It'll be filled with, 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 with terms and phraseology that God never will honor. And many of the people in the body of Christ, our lives are not being honored by God into the place of fruitfulness because another kingdom is being lived out through us. A whole nother lifestyle system that, that, that's either black or white or Asian or Hispanic or nor northern or southern or Midwestern or United States or another nation a culture, all of these things that we gravitate to, but they're not the kingdom of God, but they become ways by which we live and we have a code of ethics that has been developed from that particular kingdom and that kingdom rivals the kingdom of God. Why? Because we've been mentored and tutored and trained to live out by other kingdoms. So we make it a little white lie instead of a lie. No, it's a lie. It ain't truth. And if it's not of truth, it's not of the kingdom. But we adjust to what's not the kingdom and then try and get kingdom benefits. So what the Lord is looking for is a people who will really want his kingdom. The very attributes of it. And who will live seeking it. Why? Because the Lord wants your life to be blessed. He wants your life to be advanced, increased, enlarged. Not so I can have stuff. But, but the Lord's been speaking to me lately about, I need you to become a kingdom influencer. You know, we got influencers all over social media. There are all kind of influencers about all types of stuff. And the Lord says, I, I've got church influencers, but I don't have kingdom influencers. Remember, the church is the training and equipping center for the kingdom of God. The church is in the kingdom. The kingdom ain't in the church. It's kingdom before church. When God created the earth, he didn't create church first. He created the kingdom first. The earth and the fullness thereof, the domain of God, the dominion of God over the earth, the sea, and what's below the sea. Jesus filled all things with what? With himself. So he went to the very depths of the earth and put himself there and filled everything under it. Came to the very heights of heaven and filled everything there. Why? So he'd be over everything and he could call it his what? Kingdom. It's part of my domain. Which means I rule everywhere and you can't put me on hold to take hold of another kingdom system lifestyle and think that all these things that you need are going to be added to you. And many people are struggling and many people are behind what God wants for them because we just haven't lived out the kingdom. Because we haven't known the kingdom. And the Lord is, is, is looking to train and build us more deeply in the kingdom so we can represent and become influencers. That people would look at the way you do things and say, I'm influenced by that. We'll look at the way you manage your money and say, I'm influenced by that. How you handle your business, how you take care of your personal self. I'm influenced by that. How you exchange and converse with people. I'm influenced by that. What principles do you use? The principles of the kingdom of God. Now I have your ear and now my influence reaches your life. I'm a grandmother that is an influencer. I'm an auntie that's an influencer. I'm a husband, a wife. I'm, hear me mothers. I'm a mother that is an influencer 
of the kingdom of God in the lives of my children, my spouse, my family, anybody I'm around. They're seeing me train my children up in the way they should go. Why? Because I'm influencing them and I'm influencing whoever sees them. Ah, stay with me. So Paul makes it clear that the kingdom is righteousness and peace and joy or heart joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, this far we've talked about righteousness in the kingdom. And, and hear this. I want you to stay the course most men and women fall away from the rightnesses of God because of, of, of not having the capacity, the stick to the endurance to be able to continue to move according to God's rightnesses. But why does that happen? I'll touch it later. I'll touch it later. I'll touch it later. But there's a reason that happens that the Lord's going to help us to see so we can come out of that. But, but hear this. Stay in positive reverence of the Lord. Continue to go after him, your first love. He loved you before anybody loved you. And loves you when you don't think anybody loves you. He is worth pursuing and keeping as your first love. And the Lord is wanting us to live in love with him. And being loved by him, and in that it births a life of reverence and a life of righteousness. God wants you to continue passing tests that are trying to come against what is good and pleasant and pleasing and aligns with the order of God. He wants you to continue to overcome temptations. The Spirit of the Lord has been gracious to us over the last five or six weeks and we don't want to run him out of the building. But we run him out of the building when we run him out of our personal lives. Because all we can bring in here is who we are and what we've been doing. So we want to continue in our personal lives to pursue that which is holy, that which is pure, that which is righteous, that which honors God. And when we do that, we bring that into this setting and that righteousness will heal. It will deliver. It will manifest breakthroughs. It will bring the presence of God into our setting. And where God is, anything can happen. Look at this. I want you to notice how Paul is systematically arranging these three attributes in Romans 14, 7. He says, righteousness, peace, and joy. Your righteousness as a kingdom citizen is as to God. Your peace is as to your brethren and to the culture that you live in. And then your joy is manifested inside of you. So I... For the kingdom of God is not in food and drink, but in righteousness, as unto God, right with God, right? And then it's peace. To who? My brethren, to the people sitting around me, the people I engage every single day. And then joy that manifests, why? Because I'm seeking the kingdom, I'm pursuing righteousness, I'm pursuing peace, and the manifestation of that is I've got joy. See, you have joy when you're doing right stuff. You even have confidence in God that you can pray, that you can hear, that you can follow him, that he's even with me when I'm living my life according to his order. So say righteousness. Right. Say peace. peace. So we're going to talk about peace today because we, 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 we've exhausted righteousness and I want you to stay in that place of gaining greater understanding of what the righteousness of God really looks like. What is peace? Peace is an earmark of kingdom life. Paul makes that clear. If somebody's living in the kingdom, they have peace. When does my peace leave me? When I slip out of the kingdom. 
with something I say, something I do, somewhere I go, something I read, something I watch. You can't watch horror flicks and have peace. Ain't no horror flicks in the kingdom. You can't watch BMF and, 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 and shy and, and power and all that and think you're going to have peace. No, you're going to have your head on a swivel. Right? So, so, so you, you, you got to go after stuff that's in the kingdom. So peace is an earmark of kingdom life. Anybody living in the kingdom, they're exuding peace. But it's also an antidote of the kingdom that is lacking. Hear this. 59% of the world says they live feeling no peace. Many of you came in here this morning, no peace. Came out of Friday on your job, your business, no peace. Ran into something during the week, no peace. Got something in the mail, got a doctor's report. Had a fallout with a relationship, no peace. 59% didn't say don't experience peace at some time. Says they are living, feeling no peace. And we wonder why gun sales are up. And we wonder why there's mental anguish. And we wonder why families are falling apart. It, it's because there's no peace. So, so there, there, there's conflict. There's turmoil in this world. There's just a major state of unrest. I mean, you see what's going on at some of our Ivy League schools. Where they're protesting and warring against officials. Just totally fighting and pushing and pulling. But this has been going on for some time, hear me, and it's only going to get worse. People paying tuition but can't even go through graduation. Because folk are in conflict on their campus. I wish somebody would have tried to keep me from going to class. I wish a student would. You can't pass us. I'm talking pre-Jesus. <laughs> Prophetically, they was probably helping me. <laughs> With my GPA, you don't need to go to class. It's, it's only going to get worse, bruh. Take another test, it's going to get worse. <laughs> But conflict and turmoil and all this unrest that's going on in the world, financially, mentally, relationally, all these things that are, are happening. Uh, I'm telling you, you can't, you can't even listen to, to daytime TV without somebody trying to oppress or depress you or make you think you're sick. You don't even know how to spell fungus. But every time you turn it on, now you wonder, have I got toe fungus? Have I got ear fungus? Do I got fungus? Everything is fungus. No peace. John 16, Jesus says this. He says, in this world, he says prophetically, I'm going to let you know. In this world, you're going to have tribulation. In this world, you're going to have trials. He prophesies to them. He says, you're going to have distresses. You're going to have temptation and frustration in this world. So God, the seer of all, the doer of all, he who sits in heaven, not in a chess match with Satan, but who has already figured all things out, says this is what I'm going to do. Because they're going to have tribulation and trials, they're going to have distress and frustration. What I'm going to do is I'm going to implement a thing called peace. I'm, I'm going to put peace in my kingdom, as a part of my kingdom, and those who are in my kingdom can take hold of peace. But those who are not of it are going to probably have to keep drinking and smoking and carousing and doing what they do. Don't let those things be named among you trying to find peace. 
But God implements peace in his kingdom. Why? So he can make known to us that there is a state you can live in. There's a place you can be in. There's a place where you can live in peace in spite of tribulation. Let me tell you, y'all. It ain't going to get no better. We came to be a light in darkness, but darkness is going to always be here. And the inventors of more darkness are going to keep on inventing more darkness. And men and women who are systematic influencers, men and women who sit in rooms determining what can be done to unleash evil on a society, they ain't going nowhere. And if they do, Check this out. This is what they have, disciples. George Soros is, they got people on these campuses in tents that are nicer than folk who are professional outdoorsmen as a lifestyle. Ain't no student buying them tents. They can't afford that stuff. But you got people out here like George Soros who fund professional demonstrators. Who go into these places and fund unrest. Many of them people on these campuses aren't even students. Just like Black Lives Matter. matter. A lot of them folk what, wasn't even black, didn't even matter. But there were professional rioters even in the city of Charlotte, we've had professional rioters who fly in, bus in, drive in at the funding of billionaires who want to continue to bring unrest to the culture. So they fund it. They fund unrest. Ah. And they're after your peace. And however it can be disturbed, they're after it because they are of their father, Satan. Hear me. When Holy Spirit fills, he brings peace. Daily we should ask for his filling, yes. But at the very moment that he filled you through your confession of Jesus as Lord... He brought peace. Peace came at that moment. Just as God has set the kingdom in you, he sets righteousness in you, and he sets peace in you, and he sets joy in you. Just imagine this. Just imagine having a, 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 a cup of something, and here's a counter, and you set it on that counter. That's the visual I'm hoping you get. It's the setting of something in place. He set peace in you. You don't have. Now let me say it right. There is nothing that you don't need that's not already in you. Why well, ain't seen it? Have you looked for it? Have you done what you need to do to activate it? Have you done what you need to do to cultivate it? Have you done what you need to do to steward it? Have you done what you need to do to, to, to stir it up and move it forward? Don't be bringing nobody your pity party and you haven't tried to do anything about the pity you haven't party with. Well, have you prayed? Have you decreed? Have you declared? Have you spoken over yourself? Have you laid hands on yourself? Have you read the word? Have you spoken the word? Have you decreed the word? What have you done about you except try and find me? I am unfindable. Act like we never talked. Come back when you apply the word to your own life and quit trying to get somebody to pick the axe head up for you. You pick the axe head up yourself and have peace.
The Holy Spirit is after producing peace in you mothers. Hear this. He doesn't want you maxed out. And I know mothers today are carrying more than mothers in any other time of our history. Many of you, the whole household is on you. And a husband's there. And children are there. But I'm working with the brothers and we're meeting and we're getting stronger and we're getting better. And we're becoming warriors that we need to be and to take our rightful place. But mothers, that's created a lot on you. And then a lot of you, you're doing what you saw your mama do. You went to bed, your mama was up. You got up, your mama was up. So you don't rest. And the Lord is bringing you into a season, mothers, where he wants to prosper your soul. He wants to heal you from what has gone on and what is gripping you and what continues to pursue you and follow you and liberate you into a new season. I hear the Lord saying because there is much work to be done by this matriarchal spirit in a society where girls have not had mothers. And the Lord is saying if I can't bring them from the body of Christ, what will I do? They're waiting to hear from you, mom. And I know you're in the store and you're pushing your grocery cart and you're taking care of your child. But there's a daughter who needs your mothering somewhere. And the Lord's going to begin to anoint you. He's getting ready to sensitize you. He's getting ready to awaken you to what's going on in the lives of other people. You're going to hear things you've never heard. You're going to see things you've never seen. You're going to tap into discernment like you've never tapped into it. You're going to move in anointings and powers. You're going to speak things that are not as though they were you're going to open up people's lives you're going to go into the history of little girls and little boys lives and you're going to begin to heal them from what they have dealt with and what they've struggled through and you're going to begin to show them who God is and the Lord is going to have a line of disciples that are behind you the Lord is taking you out of the church he's moving you out of what is comfortable and for many of you this has already begun and the Lord is saying walk with me stay with me abide with me because there is more inside of you than what you have seen my daughter mothers it is time to arise saith our king hallelujah holy spirit is after producing peace in you all of us producing peace That's what he's doing. He is making all of us, if we'll work with him, peaceable. There's some things about a believer. A believer, number one, should be disposed to peace. Meaning they should have a willingness for peace. I just want peace. I just want peace. I, I just want peace. Now, I just want peace. Don't mean I'm avoiding situations. So don't, 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 don't flip that and say, well, well, I don't never confront anything because I just want peace. No, you want chaos. That, that, that's what that is. You don't, you don't deal with stuff. You just got chaos. You can't keep scooting dirt up under a, a rug and don't think you're going to get a lump that you're going to trip over. But a believer should be disposed to peace, meaning they have a willingness for peace. They should not be contentious or quarrelsome. We're talking about peace that God's given us in his kingdom. A believer should be quietly behaved. Okay. Full of justice. Full of kindness. Full of humility. These are fruits of peacefulness. Now, there's a parallel I, I want to draw out so that we can get more of a working sense of peace. It, it, it's this. Hear me. Peaceable and peaceful are different. Peaceable and peaceful are different. Peaceable 
refers to a person or thing. Okay? And it means that they are willing to be at peace or make peace. That's peaceable. I'm willing to be at peace. I'm willing to make peace. I'm willing to do what I need to do personally to be at peace. And I'm willing to do whatever I need to do to make peace. This is how God sees the thing. It's for the believer. He's saying, listen, be at peace and make peace. Be at peace or make peace. Now, peaceful usually refers to a place or situation that is free from disturbance or free from violence. That's what peaceful is. Whereas peaceable refers to a person or thing that is willing to be at peace. I won't argue no more. I won't keep going back and forth with this no more. We're going to blow up. We're gonna, let's get off the text and let's have a face to face. Let's stop talking about this matters too deep. Let's quit going over this. Let's quit bantering and going back and forth. Let's get some peace. A peaceable person will make that reference. Oh, we're going to talk about this. Well, I'm going to tell you what we're not going to do as we talk about it. You ain't going to cuss me. You ain't going to hit me. You ain't going to tell me we can leave. You ain't going to go out on the porch and start hollering. We're going to be peaceable. Why? Because I'm a believer and, and I'm about peace. And seeking to accomplish it by the means I need to accomplish it. Because I'm not trying to be right. I'm trying to be reconciled. See, we enter into stuff wanting to be right. And we come with both barrels loaded. And we have our best stuff. And we done consulted with whoever on the job. And oh, I'm going to remember that girl. I'm going to remember that. I'm going to remember that. Because when he say this, I'm going to drop that. Just like I'm going to drop that right there. Just like, what's that you said again? Now, she ain't got no peace in her life. He fussing with everybody on the job, but you're going to get advice from him about how to handle something. Oh, contraire. <laughs> Say peaceable. peaceable. Say peaceful. peaceful. Okay, so I got to be willing to be at peace or make peace, or I want to have a peaceful environment around me. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Turn to Romans 12, 18. You were just at 14, a couple books over. Romans 12, 18. To the right. Romans 12, 18. Now, now, what is Romans 12, 18? This is peaceable. This is being peaceable. Romans 12, 18 says this. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with just the people you like. Everyone. I mean, I could create a mess, but I'm going to live at peace with you. I could act out. I could manifest. I could be what I saw growing up. I could cuss you, fight you, kick you. I, I could come against you. I could slander you. No, no. But what I'm going to do because I'm in the kingdom, say I'm in the kingdom. As far as it depends on me, I'm going to live at peace with everyone. Amen. Listen, listen. As far as it depends on me. Well, I said it once. No, as far. I've said it twice. As far. As far. As far. As far as you've got to go. To manifest peace, go there. Yeah. 
Ain't nobody got time to be living fussing. Ain't nobody got time to be living arguing. Nobody has time to be living in dissension with somebody all the time and sucking your teeth and and, and all that stuff and, and oh, oh you, you don't know you don't know you you got the right one all that foolishness. Nobody's got time for that in their life. Why are we doing that? Huffing and puffing and walking around, face all distorted, looking for something. You ain't delivering the right package. Well, ma'am, I just started 13 minutes ago and I made a mistake. I told y'all about the time the person left, left the ministry because of me. Yeah, we, she, she and I had the same SUVs and are called into, into, into uh, OnStar and, and what they were supposed to be doing to my truck uh, remotely, they were doing it to her truck, and, and I just got fed up with it. And I don't know what I did, but I'm sure it was bad. I don't even know what I said, but I'm sure it was wrong. And so the next Sunday at church, people come up to me and, hey, da 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 and I want you to meet my daughter, and she just got a new job. Yeah, I just got a new job. Where are you working? I'm working at OnStar. And you were my first customer. And you were very nasty to me, and I'm leaving this church. What you going to do? <laughs> did you tithe first before you left? Did you? That's about all you can do. <laughs> Why? Because I, I, I'm just going to be me. I'm not going to be a facilitator of peace. But I'm thinking going off on you is going to bring me peace. No, it's just going to bring me condemnation and guilt. So he says, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. People cut you over in traffic. Smile. Look at the next person and say, you can go too. You can go too. Everybody just get in front of me. I, I, I be in the airport, check it in, and, and you know, and, 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 and they call group one. Everybody rushes up, and folk just kicking you, <laughs> just all, and, and, and I'm just taking blows. Just leave it, I'm not going, I, I'm not getting funky before we get on a plane. I don't know you. I don't know what's in your little bag because I made it on with my razor the other week so I don't know what you packing and I'm a trip as far as it depends on you live at peace I love the way it says in the message bible message bible says it like this it says don't hit back Somebody say, the kingdom is at hand. Yeah, the, he, he said, don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. I love how it says, if. If you got it in you. Some of us ain't activated it in us. Well, I, I don't have it in me today. No, no, you can't. You can't do it when you want to. Live in peace every day. He says, if you got it in you, get along with everybody. If you don't have it in you to get along with everybody, something's wrong with you. Stop blaming everybody. Start, I always start with me. I just start, well, is it you? I had a little situation the other day that I could have spoke to right away. I just been waiting. I'm like, is it me? Is it me? Is, is, is it me? And I'm trying to make sure it's me before I speak to it because I want to get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. You call them, they all short. Hey. You'll never ask me like that. Well, I just am. No, no, look, 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 look. Don't insist on getting even. Y'all, we have to look at our actions and say, well, what's really the gain in that stuff? 
Get mad. Shut down. Don't say, no, don't say nothing to nobody. Just walk around the house. <laughs> just upset. Just, just angry. Just getting even. They did it to me. I ain't going to speak to them. I ain't going to talk to them. I ain't going to return the text. I, I ain't going to call them. I, I ain't going to do nothing. No, here, here, here it is. Don't, he says, God says, I'll do the judging. Either we're going to, to, to mix faith with the promises or we're just going to have a mess. The promise is I'll do the judging. I'll take care of it. Faith is I'll trust him to do it. I'll rely on him to do it. I'll lean on him to do it because I don't have time for all the chaos and the confusion and rehearsing it with 17 different people. Here they come. Oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> God says, I'll take care. Hold your peace. Vengeance is mine. I will repay. But when you pray that they're repaid, you pray the Lord has mercy on them. In the repayment. Because I, I ain't want nobody to get jacked up. I don't want, no, not want anybody, anybody's situation to be bad. I don't want anything to be crazy for anybody. So, so I'm going to pray God's mercy on you. I'm not, I'm not going to pray that he destroy you. David played some crazy prayers. I, 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 I'm just not David's eye. David eye. David eyes. Look at Matthew 5. Peace, 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 peace. Some of you got to go back into situations today. You need to be stirring up peace, letting the work of peace come in you. Mothers, I want you at peace. You carry too much. You do too much. There's too much that you have been called to put your hands to. You, you need peace. He says in, 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 in uh, Matthew 5 is the Beatitudes, right? Yes. That means what? That should be your attitude. <laughs> that boy spitting today, ain't he? <laughs> that boy went deep on that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> my God, my God. That's about the best thing I got for y'all today is that right there. But this should be your attitude. He, say, he says, number nine, verse nine, blessed are the makers of and maintainers of peace. Who in here can stand to not be blessed? None of us. There's just some gimmies in the kingdom. This is a gimme. This just requires me to, to be a maker of peace and to be a maintainer of peace. Moms, you know how to do that. Because you got this one over here that act like you. And then you got this one over here that acts like you too. No, you, you got stuff going on all around you, and, and, and they just are, well, well we're going to ask mom when she get home. We're going to tell mom, mom will get it right, mom, mom, mom. And you're trying to sneak in the back door and up the back staircase because you don't want to hear none of it. Because they know, here it is, as mom goes, so goes the house. Right? So if mom is carrying peace, the house is going to be peaceful. Because mom can shut the child down and mom can close the promised land. And all the Moses is in here said, oh Lord. That's just a preview of this weekend. <laughs> Blessed are the makers and maintainers of peace. For they shall be called sons of God. Yeah. Why? Because they're making peace. They're maintaining a kingdom attribute in the kingdom that is infallible. 
They're taking a construct that has been set inside of them and working that construct into the edification of lives and environments, including their own. Who wouldn't want peace? Jesus tells us that makers of peace and maintainers of peace are sons of God. So hear this. The kingdom of God requires peace. I can't advance the kingdom with Vicky if we're not at peace with one another. That's why you fix your differences with people early. You don't let things hang on and hang around and just, just be out there. No, you, you deal with it when the most feasible time there is to deal with it, but you try to move in it as quickly as you can. Why? Because we have a kingdom to advance. That we can't be at odds with each other. Why? Because it breaks up the peace. And when the peace is broken up, it creates a strain on the relationship and a strain on the anointing that doesn't need to be there because we've got things we've got to do together. Hear me, husbands and wives. You've got to reorder and fix things to get peace in between you so the Lord can step in and manifest in greater ways. Why do most not make or maintain peace? Too much soul rule. Our soul rules us. Soul being our mind, our will, and our emotions. We get in our mind, I ain't, I, no, no, no I'm, I, no, I'm dealing with this one. It gets in our will. I don't care what I got to do. I'll drive over there. I'm going to take this on. Then our emotions, I'm all over the place. I'm just loud, I'm just mad, I'm just boisterous, I'm just going to get it. I'm, I'm dealing in this. Don't call my name, I'm gone, I'm out of here. <laughs> Too much soul rule. Where your mind rules you, your will rules you, your emotions rule you, so you do what they say. Talking about emotions, when you're led by your emotions, you become dangerous to yourself and others. Well, I'm, I'm quiet when, when, when it don't go my way. You're, 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 you're dangerous because you're cutting yourself off from other people, from people who need you, need to connect with you, need to do life with you. So there, there's no safe way to move emotionally when it's around what you perceive as a negative, con a negative situation. Because either you're going to cut back, cut off, or cut somebody out. When you're led by your emotions, you become dangerous to yourself and others. Meaning you're able or likely to cause harm. There is danger to emotional living. Because emotional living places a reliance on your emotions. Not Holy Spirit's governance of our lives. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Your feelings are unreliable in comparison to Holy Spirit revelation. Look at Galatians 5. Mothers, you can, you, you can walk this out and change the very atmosphere of your homes. You can change it wherever you're doing business, wherever you're, you're working, wh wherever God's given you to have influence. You, you can go in being the carrier of peace. Galatians 5, 16 and 17. You know this. Paul writes, but I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit. What's that look like? Being responsive to Holy Spirit. Controlled by Holy Spirit, guided by Holy Spirit. Y'all, these are prayer points. These are places to press into. These are places to call on the strength of the Lord to manifest this in your life. This is what builds us in the mature believers. He says, walk and live in the Holy Spirit. He says, look at the then. He says, then you will certainly not grab. Certainly not. Certainly not means what? Certainly not then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh 
What makes us want to be mean? Craving of our flesh, the desires of our flesh. What makes me want to be troubled and stirred and stir other people and stir other things and not allow there to be peace? I've got my own craving and I'm after how I need to feel. And I need to feel like I got with you. I need to feel like you heard me. You heard me? Look at verse 17. Well, why can you not walk? I, I, I mean, why should we do it? He says, because this is the battle. For the desires of the flesh are opposed to Holy Spirit. The, God has filled you with peace. It's in there. He's put peace inside of you by Holy Spirit. The desire of the flesh is opposed to you being peaceful. And the spirit is opposed to the flesh like the flesh is opposed to the spirit. For these are antagonistic to each other. Continually withstanding and in conflict with each other. I want peace, but I want to war. I want peace. But I got to say this, I want peace, but I'm going to upset. I'm going to shut this thing down. I'm going to break in on this. I got peace. I'm sick and tired of you acting this way, doing this way. I'm going to deal with you in an antagonistic way. They're warring with each other. But what happens is we forget that peace is there because we've so long lived going after what is anti-peaceful. Some of us didn't even grow up in a house of peace. So now here we are grown with our own house and we don't even know how to have peace. I'm on the job and I don't know how to have peace. I'm falling out with everybody. I got, I got a different group of friends every nine months. Folk in the ministry don't know when to speak to me or how to speak to me. The last time they spell, hey, how you doing? Next time, <laughs> and you're feeling like it's okay because God knows my heart. Yes, he does. And he's saying it's wrong and it's off. Don't act like that's a, a green light to be like I want to be. Okay, so, so hear this, hear this. It goes on to say, antagonistic with each other, withstanding and in conflict with each other so that you're not free but are prevented from doing what you desire to do and in the kingdom that's to live at peace so I have to pull it down I have to take it captive anything that causes me or wants me to be unpeaceful I got to pull that thing down put it under my feet speak to it tell it what it will not do what it will not manifest what it, and I have to do it as many times as I have to do it God calls us to live in relationship with each other in our homes, our businesses. But you can't live in relationship with people when you're basing things on emotions. Just because you feel it is their validation and confirmation of the spirit. Or is it uh, my thing is. So now I begin to make you an accuser of the, I become an accuser of my brethren. And Satan already has that job. Let me finish this up and then we'll, we'll come back next, well not next week, I think next week. Yeah. Peaceable and peaceful. Both are tied to kingdom living. Peaceable points to a person. Peaceful points to what a peaceable person can create. So, so, so you're telling me, Apostle, I can create peace? Yeah. A peaceable person looks to create peace. Uh, I'm about to say something about somebody I shouldn't. 
I, I want peace, I'm backing off of that. About to do something I shouldn't do, I want peace, I'm backing off of that. But when I back off of it, again, I can't get in my anti-you world while I'm trying to process getting in peace. I'm going to move toward you in peace in spite of what happened. Isn't that what Jesus did with Peter? Jesus went to where they were fishing after Peter had denied it. Peter didn't speak to Jesus first. Because usually people that do something to you try to avoid you. We run into people all the time that leave the ministry, left the ministry, all that kind of stuff. And they be ducking down behind clothes and in parking lots and driving way down. All you see is a steering wheel in a hand. They just be carrying on. I just look down at a sunroof. Hey. Jesus did what? He, he went toward him. Why? Because he wanted to create peace. I mean, you, 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 you were my most boisterous. You were the one that, that defended me. You were the, the, the one that, that, that led the 12 and you led the three. And then you deny me. And now here we are. What am I going to do? And I know you did me wrong. He said, I'm going to come towards you with peace because I was out of line because I missed the mark. I'm going to move towards you. Why? Because we can create peace. I can create whatever's in me. If anger's in me, I can create anger. If offense is in me, I can create offense. If fear and pride is in me, I can create. If, 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 if love and goodness and kindness and, and the fruit of the spirit are in me, I can, I can create that at any time, anywhere. I can, create, I can step into any situation and create that. I can pray into that. I can speak into that. I can desire to move into that. How did Jesus make the winds and the waves behave? He created peace. I mean, read the story. The storm is just going crazy. And Jesus is laying in the boat asleep. How could he be asleep? He had peace. Mothers, we're not walking the floors all night anymore. We're not staying awake all night anymore. We're not worrying. We're not fearing. We're not doubting. We're not anticipating or expecting the worst. No, not, not anymore. From this day forward, not anymore. Why? Because you're going to leave here carrying peace. And you're going to leave here and you're going to create peace in places. Where there is no peace. You're going to go in that apartment called the bedroom that your child has upstairs and you're going to create peace in the apartment. You're going to create peace with the neighbor you don't speak to. You're going to create peace. Why? Because I'm carrying it. Because I've been built up in the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to step into environments carrying the fruit of who he is and what he put inside of me. Peace is my choice. Matthew 6.33 says, do not worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to wear. Don't worry about none of that stuff. Get into the place of peace. You sure seem peaceful about this. I am. Because people expect you to be undone. People expect you to be messed up. And they say, no, I'm, I'm an ambassador of the kingdom. 
When salvation was planted in me, righteousness and peace were planted in me as well. And, and I'm going to demonstrate peace. Now, peace doesn't mean the absence of tension. It's a state that I'm in. I might cry, but I'm still at peace. I might not understand, but I'm still at peace. Might not be the way I want it to be, but I'm still at peace. Why? Because he's got me. He's keeping me. He's sustaining me. I want my mothers to come to the altar now. Please, and y'all, please don't sneak out. A lot of times we have altar calls and people tip out. Let's, let's be a corporate body. Let's be a corporate body. I just want my mothers to come up. All the mothers. All the mothers. Hey. Peace. If, if you're going to be celebrated today and you are, you need to be in peace. You need to just be in peace. You, I was reading Deuteronomy 30 this morning. It's talking about choose life and blessings or death and curses. What you gonna choose? Cho choose peace and rest in God or choose anxiety and tear your body down. I need you around a long time. And that may be selfish, but I need you around a long time. I've poured into you for years and years and years. And I need these things that I'm poured, carried out and poured into a next generation. There are some things that you personally need to do to get peace. Places, things, people, stewardship of your time, your body, your relationships, your mind, things you're going to have to do to have peace. Peace is never absent, absent of tough decisions. But if I'm going to guard my heart, if I'm going to facilitate and govern my life in a way that I can be productive and I can fulfill destiny and purpose and I can make disciples and build people and lead people in the greater things and serve their lives I gotta get in a place of peace stuff ain't gonna stop and you can't stop stuff but you can stop how you act when stuff comes You weren't made to fall apart at every tough situation. You weren't made to give up and walk away. No. You are life givers. You are so necessary in the settings that you live and move and work in. And there are people that need to experience what's in you. Let it be peace. You hear their problems, you hear their circumstances, you hear their situations. They share with you all they're going on, all they're dealing with. Stop right there, honey. Peace. I declare peace in your life, the spirit of peace in your life. I wanted to say this to you. You have to want peace. You have to want it. 
when I want it, I start doing things that will lead to it. And that usually begins with me. The things I just got to do, I want peace. The Lord told me, he said, you got to quit wanting everybody to change. You need to change. And I told him the same thing y'all tell him. I already did change. <laughs> and then he's like, hell, you ain't through though. <laughs> I'm through, you ain't through. You know, he you, you, says you're not, you're not through changing. The only constant in life I've taught you is change. <sighs> Jesus says, my peace. I give to you my peace I leave with you some of you sense that right then he just said my peace I and he hasn't changed his promise he hasn't changed his declaration let, let me hold up there's peace in here I got to find let me pray let me read let me study let me turn this off let me break away from that let me just be still a moment Peace, be still. If he can steal by the spirit of peace a storm, he's shown you there's not a storm that his peace won't steal. And we got to stop saying, well, you don't, you don't know the storm I'm in. Yeah, but I know the one who is peace. I don't know your storm, but I know one thing, you've been equipped to overcome your storm. You've been equipped that your storm won't take you out. Hardships, difficulties, trials, tribulations, distresses, they're going to come, mama. They're going to come. My choice is, but they will not overtake me. Why? Because I have peace. Tell yourself that. Tell yourself that till you believe it. Minister that to yourself till you believe it. I care what the doctor says. And I know you got children that you're wondering, where are they and are they going to be okay? And that's okay to have that concern, but don't let it steal your peace. Worry should never replace peace. God hasn't made you to worry. He's made you to be overcomers by the constructs that he's built into your spirit by his spirit. Say, I have peace set in me. I have peace set in me. I have peace set in me. Holy Spirit has planted it there. Come on, Holy Spirit has planted it there. Lift your hand and say, peace do what you do. Peace do what you do. I give you room to do what you do. Oh, shebero dabaha neshi nebero. Shemenantaka. There you go. There you go. You're not going to lose. You're not going to be overtaken. But you are going to find peace. It's already there. It's already there. It's already there. It's already there. Say, peace of Jesus. Manifest in me. You don't have a problem, you have an opportunity for the glory of God to invade your life, for the beauty of God to consume you. That, that's what you've got. And you've got an opportunity for his peace that surpasses all understanding. I know what you understand about what you're dealing with. 
but there's a peace that goes beyond that to give you a peace that's beyond the understanding you have father give them peace beyond all understanding some of you don't even know what you're dealing with and why Lord bring peace to the process I'm telling you the Lord is here if, if you will open you go you're gonna receive him he is so here this is his love for you let the power of peace let the presence of he who is peace the Lord Jesus step in to these daughters of God's lives step in spirit of peace manifest work heal deliver set free I break the shackle and bondage of worry and fear off your life loose God's daughters and let them go loose them in the name of Jesus now peace like a river peace flow like a river peace overtake like a river father let them hear your words my peace I give you my peace I give you let them hear your words father let them hear your words my peace I give you I give you peace for where you are I give you peace for burden I give you peace for hardship I give you peace for uncertainty I give you peace for fear I give you peace for anxiety I give you peace for the doctor's report I give you peace for the career for the vision I've given you I give you peace for everything I've called you to put your hands to I give you peace around your boss and peace around your job and your business I give you peace around your children I give you peace around your grandchildren and the issues of their lives I give you peace around your marriage peace 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 unto you peace that the Lord has already worked it out peace peace father let your peace minister deeply into the very core of your daughters burn out sickness burn out disease burn out affliction peace let your power burn out every negative work of the adversary in the bodies of your daughters wellness be your portion healing be your portion by the peace of God stop the worrying we bind the spirit of worrying we cut it out in the name of Jesus we command it to flee from you flee God's daughters go in the name of Jesus peace come peace peace come peace 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 flood me flood me flood my life flood my life awaken me to your peace awaken me to the peace that you carry the peace that you are the peace you've given me hallelujah peace now begin to thank God for peace that overcame the fear or the doubt or the hopelessness or what's upsetting you what's gripping you I thank you for the peace I received the peace come on open your mouth I thank you for the peace tell him tell him I I received my peace I received peace I've got peace peace is manifested in my life peace peace I receive your peace God let your peace work in me father let your peace have its perfect work it's perfect work inside of me hallelujah yes shall I call take it deliverance is the children's portion deliver me from fear deliver me from worry deliver me from doubt deliver me from hopelessness deliver me from sickness deliver from disease deliver from hardships deliver God by peace let peace change the trajectory I hear the Lord saying I'm gonna give you strategies that you couldn't hear because you were too restless I'm going to give you ways and means by which to move. Ways and means by which to live. Ways and means by which to have your being. I'm going to give you ways and means. I'm going to replace the worry with peace and with strategies. 
I'm going to show you pointedly what to do, how to do it, where to do it, when to do it. I'm going to open up the doors and show you where to step and show you how to move and what to do when you get in. I'm calling you not just to go in, but go in and possess. And I'm going to show you how to possess the next level, how to possess the next place in your body, the next place in your health, the next place in your relationships. I'm going to show you how to possess the new thing, the better thing, the bigger thing. Let my peace rule in in you peace rule peace rule peace rule tell the adversary peace rules here hallelujah oh. hallelujah 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 peace flow peace flow peace flow but just turn and encourage your sisters and say, you have the peace of God. You have the peace of God. Come on, tell your sisters, you have the peace of God. You have the peace of God. And I declare it activated in your life. You have the peace of God. And I declare it manifesting and moving forth in your life. You have the peace of God. And I declare it manifesting in you, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Come on, to prophesy to somebody. Speak what the Lord puts in your spirit about peace, about their future. They will not lose. They will not be held back. It is not over. They are not stymied. They will. They will go forth. They will accomplish. They will become. They will be. They are who God made them to be. Peace to you. Peace to lead, to be, to love, to care. Peace. Hallelujah. Peace. Peace. I've got peace that I am who God says I am. I've got peace that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I've got peace that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I've got peace that I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I've got peace that I'm more than a conqueror. I've got peace that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, the Spirit of might and counsel, the Spirit of wisdom and knowledge, the Spirit of revelation and understanding, the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. I've got peace that God is with me. Peace that God will not let me down. Peace that God won't leave me like this. Will not leave me by myself. I've got peace. I've got peace. I've got peace. Peace is mine. Peace is mine. Peace is mine. Peace in my household. Peace with my children. Peace with my relationships. Peace. I've got peace with where I am financially. I've got peace flowing out of my life. The peace God's given to me. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. And I'm going to be a carrier of peace, a deliverer of peace, a distributor of peace. I'm bringing peace wherever I go, wherever the soles of my feet tread. I'm bringing peace. I'm bringing peace. I'm bringing peace. I'm bringing peace. When I show up, peace comes. I am a peaceful woman. I am a peaceable woman. I declare peace in the house. Peace in the men. Peace in the children. Peace be your portion. Peace be lived out. Peace be demonstrated. Peace be made real. Peace in your house. Hallelujah. Peace. Peace. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Let it flow. Father, let it flow from heart to heart, from breast to breast. No more worry. No more fear. No more doubt. No more wondering. It is well. It is well. It is so. It is good. Peace of God. Consume me, overtake me, shift me, change me, build me, realign me, reconstruct me, reorder me, strengthen me, give me new vision, give me new purpose. Let it come from peace. Father, give me peace that I may see, that I may hear, that I may know, that I may understand. Peace is in your kingdom, God. Let your kingdom come in me. Let its peace Roll through me. Flood through me. Stand up in me. Break out of me. Let peace be the order and the culture of this house and your house. I declare peace activated in your dwellings. Peace activated in your house. Between you and your spouse. Between you and your children. Peace. Peace in the house. Men walking in peace. Children walking in peace.
Father, let peace like a river flood our being. And we worry not. We doubt not. We fear not. We quit not. We back down not. We have peace that surpasses all understanding. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Let the peaceful give the Lord praise. Come on, let the peaceful give the Lord praise. Let the peaceable give Lord praise. Let the peace of God consume God's people. Praise Him like you've got peace. No worries. No problems. No issue will hold me down. No issue will pull me back. Nothing will stop me in Him. I will be what He says I will be. I will become who He said I'll become. I'll have what He says I have. I'll live and move with Him. I will walk with my Jesus. I am not disqualified. I am not cut off. I am not held back. And I choose peace and believe it in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout. Hallelujah. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these zones will rain. Great are you. All the earth, all the earth. Our hearts will cry, these bones will break. mothers come on mothers come on mothers on the earth One more time, all the earth. All the earth will shout your Woo! Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Hey! Great are you, Lord. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. The Prince of Peace deserves your praise. He is our peace. He is our manifested peace. And we receive it. We believe it. We declare it. It is so. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. We thank you for peace. We thank you for peace. We will live and not fear. We will live and not die. We will live and not back off or back down. We have his peace. Father, in the name of Jesus, we leave today in peace. We walk out from where we are in peace. We take hold of peace. Come on, just keep receiving it. Be anxious for nothing. You've got peace. Be anxious for nothing. You've got peace. Be anxious for nothing. You've got peace. Find it, find it, find it. Stir it, live it. Profess it. Call it up. And as we leave today, God, we leave not by power nor might, but by your spirit. Look at me. You mothers, all of us, you can't have peace by your own strength. So I was saying earlier, righteousness will wane 
when it's done in your own strength. You cannot move in your own strength. That is automatic failure. Scripture tells us to live by the Spirit. Meaning I am living by the power of Holy Spirit in me. I am resting in his power. Hebrews says enter his rest. My rest is I quit laboring and I allow the Spirit to lead my life. And when he leads my life, I've got peace. Because he takes me where? Besides still waters. And even if he leads me into a wilderness, he's there to comfort me. I still have his peace. But I have to allow my life to be led by Holy Spirit. What does that look like? Just ask him to do it. <laughs> How do I accomplish that? Just ask him to do it. Lead me. Be my power, be my action. Go where you want to go. We often fall away from God because we can only last so long in our own strength. You hear me? Your strength runs out. Holy Spirit doesn't. He never runs out. He never runs out. He is peace. Peace will never run out. He is righteousness. Righteousness will never run out. He's strength. Strength will never run out. It'll never run out. It'll never run out. So I depend on Holy Spirit. If you're spirit filled, you live by the Spirit. So I let the Spirit lead me. And He leads me in the places where I can be at rest because you got it, God. And now I can be at peace. I can be at peace. I'm telling you, there's an anointing on my life right now for rest and peace. Raise your hands. Father, let what rest upon me in this season for rest and peace. Let it consume your people. Let it consume your people. Let them hear the voice of the Lord and harden not their hearts and move into rest. Rest is another word for abide. Let them abide in you, live with you, do things with you, not ahead of you, not behind you, not hoping you'll like it, but grace them to do things with you that they may move in rest and they may have peace. And the strength of the Spirit, not our strength, will cause us to endure. Let it be so, God. Let it continue. We leave and we celebrate life we celebrate you and we celebrate the givers of life that you work through and that is our mothers thank you god let signs wonders and miracles follow the lives of our mothers let them be overtaken by your power and by your anointing let them encounter you in new fresh ways god that will strengthen their body let even feeble bones be made strong I declare sickness, disease, and affliction must get out of their bodies now by the work of your spirit. And Father, every time you bless me, bless these mothers. Every time you bless me, bless these mothers, God. The favor is on my life. Let these mothers carry it. God, the breakthrough, the fallow ground, the hardships, the ceilings, the caps, the limitations they've run into and let the strategies of heaven break them into new places into their promised land for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory we leave in power equipped and in peace in Jesus' name amen put your hands together and bless Jesus how great and how awesome he is God bless you love you